there are different types of functional groups in organic. And the functional groups are the reactive part of the molecule. This is where the action happens. On eCampus in chapter 11, there is the functional group table here. Um, this you cannot bring with you to the exam. You need to know all of these functional groups. So I will be going over each one of them. You need to know how to draw them and you need to know their name as well. We're going to start by um, alkanes. Alkanes are not functional groups. But because all of the functional groups, they have an alkane chain connected to it, we need to define the different types of carbons in there. Normally, if uh, um, you have a long alkane chain for simplicity in organic, we represent it as an R chain. And this is kind of like an abbreviation in there, just telling you that this is a long carbon chain. How many carbons? It's just a general formula in there. So R can be two carbons, three carbons, four carbons, um, up to infinity. So um, for the types of alkanes, um, or I'm sorry, for the types of carbons in there, there are actually four types of carbons. And it all depends on the carbon, uh, on the central carbon in there. So if a carbon is connected to one carbon, then we are going to call this a primary carbon. This is how we draw it, okay? If a carbon is connected to two carbons, then this is going to be called a secondary carbon. And if it is connected to three carbons, then this is called a tertiary carbon. And if it is connected to four carbons in there, um, then this is going to be called a quaternary carbon. And we represent the quaternary carbon by four circle, and then uh, C stands for a carbon. This is important because every functional, because most, not every, most of the functional groups in there, they are connected to a carbon chain. So you want to know what type of functional group you are working with, primary, secondary, or tertiary. And to know this, you would need to know the different types of carbons. So let's start by a simple example here. This is an alkane chain. It's a regular alkane chain. You can see that it is a branched one because um, you do have your long carbon chain over here. And then coming off that uh, chain is all this group and all this group. So we call it a branched R chain. It is a carbon chain, so it is an R chain in there. So the question is, what is the type of each carbon in the structure? We have here multiple number of carbons, right? So we're going to start with the CH3 in here, the type of this carbon. So you, all what you need to do is just look at this carbon and see um, how many carbons it's connected to. So this carbon is connected to one carbon. Then uh, we're going to call this a uh, primary carbon. This carbon over here is connected to two carbons. So this one is going to be a secondary carbon. This one is connected as well to one, two carbons. So it's a secondary carbon as well. So notice that a CH3 is a primary carbon. A CH3 in there is a primary carbon. And its hydrogens are a primary hydrogens as well. Um, a CH2 is a secondary carbon and the CH is a tertiary carbon. So this one is a CH. So this one is connected to three carbons. Where are the three carbons? Let's highlight them. This is one, this is two, and this is a three. So this one, this is why it is a tertiary carbon. We're gonna go over every single one of them. This carbon again is a tertiary carbon because it's connected to three carbons. This one is a primary and this one is a primary. So the carbons on the edges, all of those are CH3s and they are a primary. Same thing here, all of these are CH3s. So these are primary carbons. And the one in the center over here, it's connected to how many carbons? See, this one in the center, it is connected to one, two, three, don't forget, four carbons there. So this one is going to be a quaternary carbon. Now, starting from here, this is now your functional groups. 
So alkanes are not functional groups, but uh, most of the functional groups are connected to alkanes. This is why you would need to know the types of carbons um, in there. So for alkenes, alkenes, we know that these are hydrocarbons that are made up of a double bond. The double bond can either be in a chain or it can be included in a cycle like that. Whenever you want to draw a cycle, there are uh, different uh, carbons cycles. So there, there are different carbon cycles here. What I am showing is a six carbon cycle. Um, in here. So for the alkene, all what you need to do is just um, highlight the double bond and say that this structure is called an alkene structure or that double bond is an alkene. Highlight the alkene and say that this is an alkene structure. After all, each one of these carbons over here is, um, a, is a trigonal planar structure. So whenever you want to draw an alkene, just make sure that you do the 120 degree bond angle in there. If I want to represent this structure as a condensed, then um, all what I need to do is, again, start reading the structure from here, from this carbon. And that is going to be a CH3. That CH3 is connected to um, a CH2, and you have three of them. So I'm just going to open the parentheses and put the CH2. This is the three of them. And then I have a CH um, in there. So I have a CH. Now, normally with the condensed, if you have a double bond, you are allowed to show the double bond. If you have a triple bond, you're allowed to show the triple bond. So I'm just going to do a double bond like this. And then the other CH over there. And then the CH3. This is one option. Another option is to take out the double bond. So it's going to be a CH3, open the parentheses, CH23, and then a CH, a CH, and a CH3. This is another option for the condensed. So when I am writing it, I would know that, you know what, this carbon um, has a bond to the CH2 in there. Um, it has a hydrogen, so this is two bonds. So definitely it should have a double bond in here uh, that is connected to the next carbon. So this is how I know that there is a double bond in there. Every carbon needs to have four bonds, not the three, not two, and not five. So pay attention to that. Alkynes is another functional group, and alkynes are triple bonds. It is linear geometry. So when you want to draw the alkyne, make sure that um, the carbon, so you have here a carbon and here a carbon, here a carbon and here a carbon, and all of those, they need to be 180 degrees. Don't represent it as, as an angle. So never ever, if you want to go ahead and represent a triple bond, represent it as an angle like that. This is wrong. It is not right because the triple bonds are linear. So pay attention to that. There are two types of uh, alkynes. There's an internal and terminal. Terminal means that the triple bond is at the end. So this means that here I do have a carbon for sure, and it is a hydrogen. So it's a CH over there. Why it's a hydrogen? Because I have three bonds and then I would need one more. So it's a CH in there. Let's draw the condensed for uh, each one of them. So this one is going to start with a CH3. Again, started from here. Then it's connected to a CH, uh, CH2. Then next to it, it's connected to another CH2 in there. You can group those two together, put them in parentheses and put two. It's fine. And then um, you have a C triple bond, C, and another CH3. Guys, this is very important there. Please do not forget that you do have two carbons in here around the triple bond and these are the two carbons around the triple bond. I can also um, take out the triple bond so that is going to be a CH3, a CH2, a CH2 and a CC and then a CH3. So if you have something like this and you have the two, CH, two Cs like this, make sure to know that this is a triple bond because every carbon needs to have four bonds in there. Now for the terminal alkyne, if I want to draw it as a skeleton form, this is going to be a CH3, 
it's going to be a CH2, CH2. Again, you can group those together in parentheses. Then again, this is a carbon. So that is going to be a C and a triple bond. And the C over there, of course, it's a C what? You cannot leave it like this because you have three bonds in there. So you need one hydrogen. So that is going to be a CH. And this is how I know this is a terminal because the triple bond is at the end. Internal is when the triple bond is anywhere within the chain. Benzene is another type of um, functional group, and we call benzene aryl or phenyl. Choose any one of those. When benzene is part of the chain, you can circle the benzene and name it as any one of these names. So to represent benzene, benzene is a cyclic compound which is made up of six carbons in the cycle. This is the structural formula for it. And the benzene um, has three double bonds in the cycle. So if I want to go ahead and uh, figure out the DBE of benzene, benzene is made up of a cycle. This is a DBE of one. And every double bond is a DBE of one. So benzene has a DBE of four. Three double bonds and a cycle. So it has a DBE of four. Benzene has a molecular formula of C6H6. Um, and there you can go ahead and... Uh, plug it in the formula for the DBE, you're going to get the same answer, which is a DBE of 4. When we want to represent benzene, we don't represent it as a structural formula because, see, it's like complicated with all of its hydrogens. So we represent it as a skeletal form. And when you want to draw it as a skeletal form, you can draw the double bonds anywhere in the cycle. So showing it anywhere in the cycle, normally what we do is we draw the cycle, cycle of six-membered rings. So we draw the cycle of six-membered rings like this. Okay, get used to these cycles in there. And then inside the cycle, we draw a circle. And that circle means that the double bond can be anywhere in the cycle. See, over here, what I have is the uh, double bond. For example, if I want to go ahead and number, it says one, two, three, four, five, and six there um and this is one two i'm just going to do the same numbering in there five and six so see for the first one i'm showing the double bond between carbons one and six for the second i'm showing the double bond between carbons one and two but these two are the same in there because the double bonds can move electrons can move in the benzene so this is why when we want to represent it, we group both of these together and we represent it as a circle. And that is called the skeletal representation of the benzene. How will this appear in the question? So I would give you an organic structure like this and I would ask you, go ahead and circle all the functional groups. For this example, there is only one, which is the benzene. So all what you need to do is just circle this benzene in here and name it. So you're going to name it as either a phenyl. You don't have to put all of them. Just choose one. Or you're going to uh, name it as an aryl. Or you're going to name it as a benzene. For simplicity, sometimes the benzene would represent it as a pH in there, which is exactly the same thing. Um, another type of functional group is the alkyl halide. So this is what I was saying that there are certain functional groups that are connected to a long carbon chain. So in order to make it to make a general formula, um, that carbon chain we represented by an R group in there. And for these, we classify them. So this one can be primary, secondary, or tertiary. And when you want to represent it, you have to represent it as a primary, secondary, or tertiary. So the type really matters in there. Um, alkyl halides, they are made up of a halogen connected to an R group, and the halogen can be any of the halogens there. Um, this is how it's going to look like, and there are different types, primary, secondary, or tertiary. We're going to go by the same definition. So an alkyl halide, alkyl means R. So if I am classifying the alkyl halide, I would need to look at the carbon that is connected to the halogen. So the halogen here, I'm going to name it chloride. This is a bromide. This is iodide. This is the halogen, not the alkyl halide. If I want to name the alkyl halide, then I want to name the carbon with the halogen. And if I want to do this, then I need to classify it. So now you look at the carbon and see how many carbons it's connected to. 
and this carbon is connected to uh, one carbon here. See? So this one, I circle the carbon that is connected to the halogen, and I name it or name it the primary, and it's an alkyl, and specify, please, the halogen. It is a chloride. Don't use halide. Halide is just a general term for any of the halogens, but this one is a specific. So every time to name an alkyl halide, you circle the carbon that is connected to the halogen. And after you circle the carbon that is connected to the halogen, see how many carbons it's connected to. So here it is connected to two carbons. So this one is a secondary alkyl bromide. Now, if you say an alkyl bromide, it is not right. It is wrong because alkyl bromide can be primary, can be secondary, or can be tertiary. So you have to um, go ahead and uh, specify. Same thing over here. We circle the carbon that is connected to the iodine and we see how many carbons it is connected to. So it is connected to one, two, three carbons. So this one is going to be a tertiary iodide. I include the condensed formula as well for each one of them. For the alcohol, same idea in there. What makes it an alcohol is the OH that is connected to the R. Same thing as what makes it a halide is the halogen connected to the R in there. So um, for the alcohols, it's classified as well as primary, secondary, and tertiary. We're going to go by the same definition. To know the type, you simply circle the carbon that is connected to the OH and see how many carbons it is connected to. One carbon, it is a primary alcohol. Two carbons, it is a secondary alcohol. And the three carbons, it is a tertiary alcohol. And I included the condensed formula for each one of them. The OH is considered to be a branch when it comes to the secondary alcohol. So this is why you would need to put it in parentheses in there. And that OH belongs to that CH. And this is the CH that is connected to the CH3, the CH2, and then the CH3. Ether is uh, another type of functional group. This is the general formula. It's an oxygen connected to two carbon chains. Now, for ethers, you don't have a primary, you don't have secondary, and you don't have tertiary. So all what you need to do for the ether is just circle the oxygen and say that this is an ether. If the R's are the same around the ether, then this is a symmetrical. If they are different, then this is an unsymmetrical ether. But you don't have to specify if it's symmetrical or unsymmetrical. Just go ahead and name it as ether. Well, if you want to go ahead and draw it as a condensed, it's exactly as you read it. So that is a CH3, two CH2s in there. So these are the two CH2s. You can group them in parentheses if you like. You can keep them like this. doesn't matter. And then next to the CH2s, you do have an oxygen and then a CH3. For the symmetrical, normally we group the two R's together and we put the oxygen at the end because these two are the same instead of writing that same thing on the other side again. It means these can be primary, secondary, or tertiary. And what makes it an amine is the nitrogen that is connected to the R. So this nitrogen over there is the one that is connected to the R. Notice here for, uh, for the amine, I am not circling the carbon that is connected to the nitrogen like I did with the alcohol. So for the alcohol in there, you circle the carbon that is connected to the OH and see how many carbons it's connected to. But for the amines, no. The NH2 stands on its own. So what makes it a primary, secondary, or tertiary amine is the number of carbons connected to the nitrogen. So if you have one carbon connected to the nitrogen, then that is going to be a primary. If you have two carbons, that is going to be a secondary. And if you have three carbons in there, then that is, uh, that is going to be a tertiary amine. Guys, keep in mind that nitrogen always have three bonds in the lone pair for a zero charge. Let's have an example. In this example, we're going to go ahead and circle um, all the functional groups. This is the question in there. So uh, for this one over here, we're going to start. Since it's a NH2 there, 
I'm just going to circle just the NH2 and see it's connected to one carbon, so I'm going to call this a primary amine. Not just an amine, because if you just say it's an amine, it is wrong, it is not specific. For the tertiary, we're going to circle the nitrogen in there, as we did. For the tertiary amine, you circle the nitrogen, and that nitrogen is connected to three carbons, so we're going to call this a tertiary amine. For the ether, we're just going to circle the oxygen. That's it. We're going to call this ether. It's something that you would need to get used to. For the OH, we're going to circle the carbon that is connected to the OH, and we're going to call this a secondary alcohol. Um, for the alkene, we're going to circle um, the double bond in there, just the double bond. This is going to be called an alkene. Triple bond, we're going to circle that triple bond there, and we're going to call this an alkyne. No need for you to label it as a terminal alkyne. It's fine. Just name it as an alkyne. And this guy over here, we're going to name it as a phenyl, or you can name it as an ethyl, or you can name it as a benzene. Epoxides, these are uh, cyclic ethers, and an epoxide is the simplest form of a cyclic ether, which is uh, made up of uh, two carbons and an oxygen that are wrapped in a three, we call this a three-member ring cycle, because it's a one, two, and a three. So this is the simplest form of cyclic ether. Okay, cyclic ethers can be either an epoxide, which is a three-membered ring, or they can be four-membered, five-membered, or six-membered in there. Um, now, as you increase the number of carbons in the cycle, you can no longer need an epoxide. Epoxide is this, two carbons and an oxygen. So for these, if you see them in the chain, then these are going to be called cyclic ethers. And this one, you're going to call it an epoxide. So let's have an example there. This is um, an organic uh, chain. I'm going to ask you, uh, the question is, just go ahead and name those functional groups. So this here is a cyclic uh, ether. So this one is a cyclic ether. And this one over here is going to be the epoxide. Notice that. I circled everything. I circled the carbons and the oxygen. Don't circle the oxygen and say this is an ether. It is not an ether. It's a cycle. So it's a cyclic um, ether, and because it's a three-membered ring, we call it an epoxide. There are a list of functional groups that contain a carbon double bond, uh, which we call it a carbonyl. Um, let's start with the aldehyde. Now, these are not classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary. Um, aldehydes, these are functional groups that have a carbonyl. And next to the carbonyl, there is a hydrogen. So this is going to be called the aldehyde functional group. When we want to represent it, we can represent it either as a skeletal form or as a condensed form. Aldehydes are always at the end because there is a hydrogen in there. So they are always at the end of the chain. Um, and when you draw it in a skeletal form, sometimes you don't show the hydrogen. You don't need to show the hydrogen. So if you want to change it into a condensed, you just do the CO. CO means a carbonyl in there. Or if you want to go ahead and show the hydrogen as this one, you just do the CHO. Uh, not the COH. COH is going to be an alcohol, so pay attention. This is how we draw the aldehyde in a condensed form. It's a C, and it's an H, and it's an O. We just want to differentiate between this and between the, um, the alcohol in there. Another example over here, uh, you want to start by drawing your structure, so always start from the uh, left. So you're starting with a CH3, and then this is a CH2. This one is going to be a CH. You open the parentheses because on the CH you have the aldehyde. And your aldehyde is a C, it's an H, and it's an O. Please don't put it as a COH. Because if you put it as a COH, this means that it is an alcohol, and it is not an alcohol. And this one is a CH2, CH2, and a CH3. You can condense further. The CH2 is not a problem. With, with that. 
Um, here I'm laying out the difference between the ether, the aldehyde, and the alcohol, and the way that you include them in the condensed formula. Ketones. The difference between the aldehydes and ketones is this hydrogen there. Because with ketones, instead of this hydrogen, you just add an auto group. And this is the general formula of the ketone. So here, instead of the hydrogen and the aldehyde, you replace it by an R and the ketones. The R can be the same or they can be different. It really doesn't matter. Um, and there, to uh, circle the ketone, you circle the carbonyl. You don't circle any of the R's. It's just the carbonyl, and this we call it a ketone functional group. Again, this one is not classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary. And if you want to go ahead and include it as a uh, scale, as a condensed form, then you, the way that you read it, you read it as a CO. So this is uh, it's going to be the CO in there. CO in organic means it's a carbon double bond. And by the look at it, the moment you look at it, you see that this is a carbonyl, it's a CO, connected to two other groups, then definitely this one is going to be a ketone. Notice that I am circling the carbon and the oxygen. All the carbonyl, you circle it, and you name it a ketone. Another type of carbonyl functional group is the ester. And the ester is um, a carbonyl that is connected to an oxygen. This is called the ester bond, and it is the weakest bond in the structure. We can break it during reactions. So this whole thing that I'm circling, this is called the ester functional group. It's not just the carbonyl and not just the oxygen. So whenever you have these two connected together, you have to circle them together. So please don't circle the carbonyl alone and say this is a ketone and the oxygen alone and say this is an ether. This doesn't happen unless the carbonyl and the oxygen are separated. But if they are connected like this, then this is a whole one functional group and it's called an ester functional group. Whenever you want to go ahead and condense it, guys, this is going to be a CO connected to an O. So we call it a C and two O's, so it's going to be a CO2. As you see it, you just write it down. Carboxylic acids, these are carbonyls connected to an OH. Same idea in there. So you don't circle the OH alone and the carbonyl alone. This is not right. Whenever they are connected together, you have to circle them together. And this is called a carboxylic. C stands for carboxylic. You can abbreviate it like this. I have no problem with that. Or you can write the whole carboxylic name in there. So carboxylic acid functional group. So you circle all of that. And it's a carboxylic acid functional group. When you want to um, do it as a condensed, is a CO2H. So you name it as or you write it down as a CO2H or a COOH, any one is acceptable. You have your anhydrides in there. The anhydrides are made up of two carbonyls that are connected with an oxygen. This whole thing is one functional group. So this is not two ketones and an ether. This is a, an anhydride functional group. So you circle it like this. When you want to condense it, it's a CO connected to an O, so you can group those two O's together, and it's going to be a CO2, and then a CO in there, so that is a CO and a CH3. Now, for the amides, these are classified into primary. These are the only, um, the only carbonyl compounds that are classified into primary, secondary, and tertiary. So we do have the amide bond, and the amide bond is this guy over here. Is this bond there. This is the weakest bond in the structure, and it can break during reactions. So this is called the amide bond. And the amide functional group is the carbonyl connected to the nitrogen. Um, this can be classified in there because we know that nitrogen can be connected to one carbon, two carbons, or three carbons. So um, if the nitrogen over here has two hydrogens there and already has one carbon, then this is going to be called a primary amide. Look at it. This nitrogen is connected to uh, one carbon. So this is why we call it a primary. And it's an amide because I'm circling this whole thing as a primary amide. 
primary amide, you circle the nitrogen with its hydrogens and the carbon. Now, the secondary amide, you circle everything. So we're going to circle all the amide group in there, whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary. Now, for this one, what I have is the uh, nitrogen, and that nitrogen is connected to two carbons. This is one, this is two. And um, this one is connected to three carbons um, in there, and this is called a tertiary amide. So this is the secondary, and that is a tertiary amide. Let's have an example on each one of those. So this one, you circle the whole thing. The whole thing, you circle it, but don't just say it's an amide. You have to specify what type of amide is this. So the nitrogen is connected to one, two, and three, so it's going to be a tertiary amide. Here, the nitrogen is connected to just one. It is going to be a primary amide. When you want to condense it, then again, you start reading the molecule from the left, CH3, CH2. This is a CO, and it's an N. And then on the end, see what do you have? Two CH3s that are the same, so go ahead and group them together. Same thing over there, CH3, CH2. That is a CH now. Open the parentheses because this is a branch. And on that branch I have, see how do I read it? I read it from the carbon that is connected directly from the branch to the branch. So that is a CO connected to the NH2. So it's a CO NH2. I don't put an NH2CO. The connectivity will be wrong. So go with the connectivity in there. This means that the CO is the one that is connected to the CH. And on the CO, you have the NH2. Um, the, um, another type of functional group is the nitrile. Nitriles are also classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary. And for nitriles in there, it's a C triple bond N. This is the nitrile. We call it the cyanide functional group. Um, so you can either uh, circle the CN and call it the cyanide whenever you want to label it. If you want to call it an alkyl cyanide, then you have to circle the carbon connected to the CN in there and see what type of carbon that is, primary, secondary, or tertiary. So for this one, because um, this carbon over here is connected to one carbon, okay, so this whole thing, this is an alkyl cyanide, and an alkyl is an auto group. So here, this is going to be my alkyl cyanide. This one is connected to one carbon, so it's going to be primary. Um, the alkyl cyanide here is connected to two carbons. Then it's going to be a secondary alkyl cyanide. And this one is connected to three carbons. It's going to be a tertiary alkyl cyanide. Guys, the C triple bond N, we can simplify it and write it as a CN. Anyways, you know that the carbon makes four bonds. So if it's making one bond here, definitely it needs to make three bonds between the carbon and the nitrogen. And you can represent it in the condensed form as either a CN or a C triple bond in there. For the sulfides, um, it's, a, it's basically a sulfur that is connected to two R's. These are called sulfides. And all what you need to do is just circle the sulfur. Um, these, they do not have primary, secondary, or tertiary. The thiols are the last functional groups, and these, they are similar to the alcohols. Instead of the uh, oxygen here, you have an, a sulfur. So you just circle the SH, and these are called thiols. We're not going to uh, classify them, so just circle it and call it a thiol. We're not going to classify them as primary, secondary, or tertiary. So let's go ahead and uh, have um, an example um, over here. So label, this is how uh, the question is going to be. So this is why I, I um, want you to be familiar with all of these functional groups. So um, label all the functional groups and use primary, secondary, or tertiary as appropriate. So we're going to circle the ketone in there. Ketones have no primary, secondary, or tertiary. For thiols, um, same thing as well. We did not classify them. For alcohols, they do. So this is why I'm going to circle the carbon that is connected to the OH. And this one is connected to three carbons. See? 
So this one, I'm going to call it a tertiary alcohol. Okay. Now, because I do have an oxygen connected to the carbonyl, then I would need to treat this whole thing as one functional group that I'm going to circle. It's not an ether and a ketone. It is an ester. So we're going to go ahead and draw it, uh, write it down as an ester. This one is an alkene. This one over here, since it's terminal, this means that there's a hydrogen in there, so it's an aldehyde. See the difference between an aldehyde and the ketone? A ketone has two auto groups next to it, and aldehyde has a hydrogen and an auto group. Um, for the nitrogen in here, of course, there's a hydrogen there, but it's, it's a skeletal form, so this is why I don't need to show the hydrogen. I'm going to just circle the nitrogen in here. This is an amine. And that amine is connected to two carbons. It's one and two. So this one is going to be a secondary amine. It just needs a practice. And um, um, you would need to do some practice on this. There is a sheet on eCampus for uh, labeling those functional groups. Please go ahead and work it out. The key is already posted. Um, and you do have the carboxylic acid. So this one is a carboxylic acid in here and this guy is an alkyl halide so that carbon is uh, connected to one carbon so i need to specifically say that this is going to be a primary alkyl chloride don't use halide because halide is general